Hmm. Ooh. Hmm. 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 Hey. What do you think? Hi, welcome to PC Support TV. I'm Mike Halsey. If you've got a new Windows PC, laptop or tablet, you'll see that it looks very different to what you might be used to. So let's have a look around this new start screen and I'll show you how it works and how you can get the very best out of it. Let's start by having a look at the basic elements of the start screen. It's built around live tiles. These are much more than clickable icons that will let you run apps. They can provide automatically updated information from within the app, such as displaying new emails, calendar appointments, social network updates, and the current weather or news and sports alerts. You'll see there are four different sizes of tile, and you can switch any tile between different sizes easily. I'll show you how to do this later in the program. You'll also see near the bottom left of the start screen is a small down arrow you can click this with your mouse to open the All Apps view. The All Apps view is where you'll find every app installed on your PC, including all your desktop apps such as Microsoft Office or your antivirus software. These apps are arranged by their name, with your new Windows 8 apps displaying before your desktop apps. You can customise this view though in different ways and in the top left of the screen you'll see a down arrow. Clicking this allows you to sort your apps by when you installed them, how often you use them, or by their category, for instance, games, education, and photo. It's from the All Apps view that you can add apps to the start screen. So let's look at how we do this. You can select an app either in the All Apps view or on the start screen in one of several ways. If you're using a mouse, right click with your mouse on the app or tile. On a touch screen, touch and hold for one second with your finger. You can also select an app or tile with your keyboard. Use the cursor arrow keys to move around the screen and press space for any app or tile you want to select. Selecting an app or tile opens the app bar across the bottom of your screen. This is where you'll find controls that you can use to work with your installed apps. When clicking on, app, on an app or tile, one of the first options to appear in the app bar is called Pin or Unpin to start. Clicking or tapping this control will add or remove that app from your start screen. Desktop apps will also display an option to pin the app to the taskbar. This is the horizontal bar that runs along the bottom of your screen when you're looking at the desktop. And with the start menu now gone in Windows 8, Pinning desktop apps in this way can make them much easier to find and open. Now I want to show you the charms. These pop out from the right side of your screen and offer ways to control both Windows 8 and your apps. You can open the charms in several ways. With touch, swipe inwards from the right side of your screen. With a mouse, move your cursor to the top right or bottom right of the screen and with a keyboard, hold down the Windows key and press the letter C. So let's have a look at the charms and what they do. The first charm is Search. Click this to look on your PC, local attached hard disk or even on the internet for files, music, anything you might want really. For an in-depth look at Windows 8 Search, check out my Using Windows 8.1 Search program. Next up is the Share charm. When you're inside an app, though not every app will support this feature, you can use the share charm to save a web page to your reading list app so that you can come back to it later, or as in the case here, select a web page and share it with various other apps that are installed on your PC. The Windows charm will switch your view between the Windows 8 start screen and the most recently used app and you can also use the start button on the desktop taskbar or the Windows key on your keyboard or if you're using a tablet, the Windows button below the screen to do the same thing. 
The device's charm allows apps to interact with other hardware attached to your PC or that can be found in your home or workplace. When you click it, three main options appear. Play, print and project. If you're on an app such as the Music, Video or Photos app or in a file manager, you can use the play control to send the currently selected item, be that a video, music track or picture, to other devices that support the Play 2 standard. These include smart TVs, internet radios and more. You should check the documentation that came with these devices to see if Play 2 is supported. These devices don't need to be connected to your PC via USB or a cable either. As long as they're connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your PC, you can throw a file from your PC to that device wirelessly. The print control allows you to connect to a USB or Wi-Fi connected printer from within apps. And there's more information on printing in my program on connecting and using printers with Windows 8.1. Next up is Project which will allow you to connect your PC to a second screen or a projector. Lastly, there's the settings charm, which performs several functions. When you click it from within an app, you'll see options for that app, such as account details or preferences, appear as links near the top right of your screen. The settings charm also displays the main PC control settings in the bottom right of your screen. These are, from the top left, your network or Wi-Fi connection and watch my connecting to networks in Windows 8.1 program for more details on how to use this. Controls for your PC's volume and on a tablet or laptop screen brightness. On the bottom row is a notification button. You can use this to silence the pop-up notifications called toasts because they pop up and this can be useful if you're giving a presentation or if you're busy and don't want to be disturbed by Aunt Mabel's latest Facebook post about her cat. Next up is the main power control. Click this for a pop-up menu containing sleep, shutdown and restart controls for your PC. The last icon is for managing your PC's keyboard and language. Last but by no means least is a link in the very bottom right of your screen called Change PC Settings. This takes you into the immersive control panel where you can add and remove users, change settings on your PC and personalise it to your heart's content. We've already looked at how you can open the charms by moving your mouse cursor to the top or bottom right corner of your screen. These are what's called hot corners and there are two more of them on your screen too. If you move your mouse to the bottom left corner of your screen, a Windows button will appear. You can click this from within an app to return to the start screen, or to return any time from the start screen to the most recently used app. If you move your mouse to the top left corner of the screen, a thumbnail image of the most recently used app will appear. You can click here to switch directly to that app, or switch to any other open app. So let's look at how we do that. With your mouse in the top left corner of the screen, move it directly downwards to display a list of all your currently running apps. You can also display this menu with touch by swiping inwards and then straight out again on the left of your screen. You can select any app in this list by simply clicking or tapping it. If you're using a mouse, you can close any running app here too by right-clicking on it and you'll see a close option appear. To close an app with touch from this menu, drag it out of the menu with your finger and off the bottom of the screen. You can also close the currently displayed app with your mouse or touch by grabbing it at the top of the screen, you'll see the cursor changes to a hand and dragging it off the bottom of the screen. So let's have a look now at how we can have more than one app appearing on screen at a time. It's always been possible on the desktop to have several apps open at a time and so it is with Windows 8 store apps too. In the same way as you would close an app, grab it at the top of the screen but instead of dragging it off the bottom, this time we'll drag it to the left or right you'll see a vertical bar appear to indicate that if you drop the app there, then it'll just occupy that half of your screen. The very next app you open, either from the running apps view or from the start screen, will fill the remaining space. 
Some larger screens will support up to four apps running side by side. When you open a third or even a fourth app, you'll see it appear as a large thumbnail image between the other two. If your screen supports more apps, then hovering on the line between the running apps will see it widen, creating space in which to drop the new app. The vertical bars between these running apps can be moved too, so you can resize the apps on your screen. Lastly, to close an app, you can drag it off the bottom of your screen as I described earlier, or you can just wipe it away by moving the vertical bar all the way to the left or right side of your screen. I talked earlier about how you can add and remove apps from your start screen, but you can customise it in many other ways too. If you select a tile on the start screen, remember you can touch and hold or right click it, then the start screen changes to customise mode. You can also open this special mode by clicking customise on the app bar. Here you can drag tiles around to reorganise them. You can select multiple tiles to move at the same time and you'll notice that when you move tiles between two groups a vertical bar will appear. This is telling you that if you drop the selected tile there at that spot it will create a new group for you. You'll soon also see an option at the top of each group to give it a name and you might want to call them social, work or games. At the beginning of this program I mentioned that you can resize tiles on the start screen. This appears as an option on the app bar and you'll see that there are four sizes you can choose from though not every app supports every size. Lastly, you can turn the live element for any tile on or off to display or hide the information they display. The last way you can change the start screen is to open the settings charm and you will see a personalise option appear near the top right of the screen. This opens a panel allowing you to change the background of the start screen to a variety of different templates including your desktop wallpaper but it also allows you to change the colour scheme for your start screen too. The last thing to show you is how you can switch between different users on your PC and you do this by clicking your name in the top right corner of the start screen. You'll see various options here such as changing your account picture, locking the PC and switching between users. You can switch directly to another user on the PC too without having to first log out and close all your apps. Indeed, this way offers the advantage that the next time you log in, assuming the PC hasn't been switched off in the meantime, all your running apps will be just as you left them. So that's all you need to get started with and get the best out of the start screen in Windows 8.1. You can find much more information in my books, but for now, from me, Mike Halsey, thank you for watching, and join me next time on PC Support TV.